We're here today with Professor Alice Lyman Miller, a research fellow at the Hoover Institution at Stanford and also a professor of East Asian Studies. Welcome, Professor Miller. It's so wonderful to have you here today. Thank you very much, Maya. So, Professor Miller, I want to start by asking you about what you do at Stanford. Well, I first came to work on a research project for which I had a foundation grant. But while I was here, um, things blossomed. And in the meantime, the East Asian Studies program recruited me uh, to teach classes on China and Asian history. During your time at Stanford, you underwent a transition. Can you tell us a little bit about that? I decided to transition with my wife's encouragement and support in the early 2000s. Now, this was only three or four years after I decided actively to pursue this part of who I am. I finally began to recognize what this was about, sought a therapist here um, in Palo Alto, and began to plan for transitioning at Stanford. I received great support uh, from the people here at Stanford whom I uh, came out to and told them what I intended to do. That included Hoover. When I told the executive uh, deputy director uh, that what I intended to do, expecting to hear um, some real concern and reservations, he was wholeheartedly supportive. After uh, I told him the very next day at Hoover, uh, they changed the nameplate on my office door from my male name to my female name, Alice. So when students come to you and ask for advice, perhaps students who might be preparing to come out themselves, what advice would you give to a younger person who is about to make a transition similar to the one that you made? I suggest to them, if they haven't already, uh, to join a support group. It's really important to meet other people uh, who are wrestling with the same kinds of problems and issues. You meet people who are dramatically different in terms of personality and you know, lifestyle and occupation and so forth, but you find out they're wrestling with the same damn problem. And so hearing their experience gives you some perspective, but it also gives you some confidence that you can actually do it. And your social relationships may change. Some of them will deepen. Um, but, but proceed carefully and get advice. Uh, it's important. How did your family respond when you told them, your wife and your children? She was set back for a minute or two. And after uh, a period of time when we both you know, talked about this endlessly, we used to have dinners together. We'd go out to our favorite Afghan restaurant and uh, just talk for hours. And uh, we talked our way through it. Uh, she decided that I was still the same person. And she's been my strongest supporter. She takes a certain delight in it. Uh, it allowed her to examine aspects of her own personality. So she thinks it made her freer too. The story I often tell is that when I told my son, um, he said he worried that it was something really important, like I was becoming a Republican. <laughs> and my daughter, when I told her, uh, her response was, great, let's go shopping. <laughs> and so, you know, each of them welcomed me uh, as Alice and uh, with, you know, with their kids and, every, and, and so forth. And they've been very supportive. What advice would you have for parents of young children who are trying to tell them that their gender identity doesn't match the sex they were assigned at birth. Parental support is key for it, and you know, give them some latitude. You know, try to understand what they're dealing with. You're worried about their future. That is the bottom line. And uh, of course you love your kids, and uh, so help them. I think of it this way anyway. It's parallel with my decision to pursue China studies when I was in college. I'd call home once a month uh, to tell my parents I'm still alive. Seven years of graduate school every month. Geez, what are you going to do with China studies? I finally finished and got a job working as an analyst in the Central Intelligence Agency. And I called my dad up and told him. And he said, geez, China studies, great field. How'd you get into it? <laughs> and, and I recognized at that point that what he was really worried about was how is this kid going to support, you know, support him, his, himself? So parents love their kids, they're worried about their future, and this kind of thing can throw things for a real loop, but it can be managed, and their support is critical to the outcome. I think this kind of a program is a great idea because it gives people a concrete example, a key 
thing that changes people's minds is getting to know somebody who is trans. Once it becomes concrete and you're dealing with a real person um, and a real life experience, uh, it's amazing how that changes things. Well, I, I've already told you that I'm a big fan of yours, so you know <laughs> that. But I want to tell you how much I admire your courage for never failing to move forward towards your your ideal of living an authentic life. And I wish that we could all do that a little more and learn from you. So thank you so much. Well, thank you so much. One of the points that I tried to offer people in the TED Talk that I did a couple of years ago was just simply, it's never too late to be who you are. And it doesn't have to be about gender. It can be about anything at all. Um, there are so many things that we just sort of accept in life um, as without question. Um, that are really unnecessary. Um, and being who you are, uh, you've only got one life. Do it.